Well, first of all, uh, collaborative learning has a very simple property, which is that it is less expensive than providing each child with a resource, because here the resources are shared. There was a traditional belief that therefore, because the resources are shared, the quality of the education will be poorer than if the resources were, uh, every child had its own resource. Uh, basically a Western assumption. But I think I was able to show that it's just the opposite, even in the West, that children when they work in groups learn better than when they work alone. So in the Indian context, it obviously produced changes in village children with very low uh, investment. Now in terms of uh, what happened to them eventually, I don't really, I can't track because there are too many thousands of them to be able to track. So I have individual uh, anecdotal case studies of children who have gone on to do a PhD, children who are studying computer science, who would have just been a farmer or maybe even a household servant somewhere otherwise. Well, firstly, as with many educational goals, they were made at a time when they had no reference to the internet because they, there was no need to make any reference to the internet. So in a way, this question is very hard to answer because the internet actually has changed the whole learning space concept completely. For example, the whole old idea of e-learning uh, doesn't actually mean anything anymore because everything is e-learning, we're doing e-learning all the time. In terms of the UN's sustainable, sustainability uh, targets, the targets themselves need to change, I think now, given the fact of the internet, given the fact that people can communicate with each other instantly, given the fact that you can learn anything when you need to learn it. These need to be factored. So I think rather than asking, will it help the old charter? It may be better to say, in what ways will it change the old charter? Well, it depends on whether we call them challenges or we call them opportunities. I think it's a question of time. I think what we are really discussing is, what would we do as a human race if we have more time? Because automation, what does automation do? It liberates your time. Of course it takes away jobs, it does all sorts of things, but whatever else it does, it liberates time. So I would, I would bring the focus to what would happen to a generation that has much more time than my generation did, or even your generation did. What would happen to a generation whose working days are maybe four hours a day? What would they do with the balance? Uh, we need to think about that from now. It has happened before, so we have some clues from the past, you know. I'll give you an analogy, you might find it interesting. When we shifted from hunter-gatherer into agriculture, the same thing must have happened. We suddenly had more time. Well, the hunter-gatherer has to work all day, right, to get and to feed himself and then go to sleep, wake up and start working again. But at agriculture, you work maybe seven, eight months a year, then the harvest comes in, you have a month, you have two months. And what did it do? It produced human thought, philosophy, poetry, music. So I look forward to it, that when this generation has 70% more time than the existing one does, what will they produce? I think it will be a, a time of great creation. But I think uh, it fits Latin America very well. I don't quite understand why, but since the time when I first developed the idea in England, 2006 or 2007, it spread almost immediately, not into Europe, not into America, North America, but into Latin America. Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, country after country would call me and say, explain it, explain it, we want to do this. I think because, I, I don't know if I'm right, but I think because Latin America has always had a certain special relationship 
to human thought more than this practical device and we will in invent this engine and we will... Latin America doesn't do that. Latin America likes to think. That's why they like poetry, that's why, okay? Maybe they see in self-organized learning environments the opportunity for children to think and they like it. The one-liner would be learn to live with the internet. We are already doing it, 24 by 7, but we are completely confused. So we tell our children, no internet for you. Because, but they're going to live with the internet even more than we are. Every decision will be taken by the internet. Artificial intelligence will exist on the internet. The internet for them will be like a thinking entity, like a conscious thinking entity. You can ask anything, you get your answers. We must allow them to explore. That's their world. And as I said in my lecture today, the best thing you can do if you are a parent is not to stop them, but to say, you go and I will come with you. You show me. We already do that, don't we? Every time you get a new cell phone, a new mobile, uh, smartphone, and you don't quite know what's going on, you look for the nearest 12-year-old and say, show me, because they know instinctively how to do it. That's their world. And I would say, let them go, but go with them. I have a mixed feeling about it. It's if they, they should learn how to think like a programmer. Because what is programming? Programming is thinking about thinking. Because you're going to make the computer think. So thinking about thinking, very important skill. But the physical act of programming, which language, when, how, on the web or on a computer, those are details. That's not what is important. So, I have done this experiment, I think not here in Chile, but possibly in Argentina, where I showed in a school that you can teach them this kind of algorithmic thinking with nothing but a blackboard. No computer needed, nothing. And they would understand what programming is. You know? That's the difference. So, I would caution against getting into the engineering of programming and say that instead focus on the philosophy of programming, the thinking behind programming, and of course, thinking about thinking. <laughs>